how we can follow God even when others aren't. Paul and the other Christians knew that there's only one true God, and they knew that it was very important to follow Him only. God's truth was so important to them that they continued following the Lord, even when it was chaotic and even when it was hard. And this week, we are going to learn that God is great. In our story, we are going to see that God, we're going to see him do something so great and so amazing, and we're going to see how people responded to God's greatness. So last week in our story, there was a riot and a lot of trouble that took place in Ephesus. And when all that had calmed down, Paul and the other Christians went to Macedonia. And so he traveled through the area and he encouraged many, many people. And Paul and the disciples got to Greece and then they stayed there for three months. But because there was some Jews who were planning some more trouble against Paul, Paul had to leave. And then Paul and the believers went to a place called Troas. So Paul and the other Christians were in Troas. And on Sunday, the Christians gathered together and they were worshiping and they were breaking bread, having communion, just as Jesus had commanded them to. Is so that Paul was planning to leave the very next day. So he preached all day and all night and continued to tell the people the truth about God. And it was getting super late at night and the people had lamps lit so that they could see because it was getting really late and it was dark. So the sun had gone down and it was really, really dark at this point. And they were gathered together in an upper room about three stories high. That's pretty high. And there was a young man named Eutychus who was there listening to Paul preach. And he was sitting by a window because it was probably pretty crowded. And Eutychus was listening to all that Paul had to say. But because it was getting so late into the night, Eutychus was getting very tired. And then he started to fall into a deep sleep. And then when Eutychus fell asleep, he fell out the window. He fell from the third floor, and then he died. And so Paul hurried down to Eutychus. And Paul held him in his arms and told everyone, don't worry, he's alive. And then all the people, you know what they did? They went right back up to the upper room. And they all ate and they talked until the sun rose. And then Paul left. And the people were so thankful that God used Paul to bring Eutychus back to life. And they were comforted by this amazing thing that God had done. And then Paul and the other believers, they began traveling some more. Paul decided to sail past Ephesus because he was in a hurry to reach Jerusalem by the day of Pentecost. And so from our story today, we see, we see something really great that God did. We saw that when Paul was preaching and sharing about Jesus, like he always did, there was a young man that fell asleep. But not only did he fall asleep, he was in such a deep sleep that he fell out the window. And he, so he fell three stories and he died. But when Paul rushed to him, Paul said that Eutychus was alive. So God brought Eutychus back to life. And this is one of the great things that God did. And through this, we learn that God is great. Before Eutychus died and was brought back to life, they spent all day, all day, learning about God and worshiping the Lord. And then after Eutychus was brought back to life, all the people went back up to the room to talk even more about God. And they went back to worshiping the Lord after seeing God's greatness. And so all the people, they continued to talk about God and to continue to talk about his word and his goodness. And from this, we again see that God is so great. So what we've learned from this story is that God is great, and God is worthy of our praise and our worship because he is great. God, God does things that no one else can do. And did you know that we can see God's greatness still today? We can see his greatness this upcoming week. We've got to be on the lookout for it, right? And we can also celebrate God's greatness. So this week, my challenge for you is to look for God's greatness each day. And I encourage you to celebrate all of those things that you see, all of God's greatness. So I'm going to close us in prayer, and then I will let you guys go. 
Father, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for my kids to be friends. I thank you for who you are, and I thank you for all the great and amazing things that you've done. And I just ask that this week we would see your goodness and that we would celebrate you, that we would share the great things about who you are and about the things that you've done with others. I just ask that you bless my kids and friends this week. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So that is all I have.